This program contains subject matter and language that may be disturbing to some viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. I've been waiting for you. I am addicted to inhalants. What is thy bidding? I need more of aerosol cans. Don't fail me again. My biggest trigger is being alone. Join us or die. It's like I've accepted death already. Join me. Together, we can rule the galaxy. I feel like I could conquer the world. You have failed me for the last time. I wish I had a father. I am your father. to resist. But you think you're being treated unfairly? I have you now. Hey freaks, it's Thursday, April 12th, 2018. Coming up on the program today, fat chicks sucking the dick of hot dog men. Plus, Baby's first midget or- orgy. <laughs> Sorry. Baby's first midget orgy. Blowing out shit particles and Trump talks piss tape. Coming up today. It's the Distorted View Show with Tim Henson. You low life piece of trash. You son of a Kansas slut. Yes. Tim Henson back here with you for the Thursday podcast. At the top of the show, uh, I was thinking about the Prune Brothers porn. I gotta take a shit real bad! And I can't believe this thing was ever produced. It doesn't really work on any level. All right, it's a porn, first and foremost, right? A woman is is going to get fucked in this thing. She's not attractive. She's like 150. So that eliminates, like, the majority of people who would be willing to jerk off to this. All right, so maybe it's a niche porn thing, right? People who are into granny sex. You're going for that small market. She basically douses herself, pours prune juice all over her naked, disgusting body, and she's, like, jumping around. She takes a frying pan and starts making monkey noises at one point, chasing these guys who are fucking her. So if you are a fan of elderly sex, you're still going to be baffled by this scene. The only people who are watching this, uh, I think, are people like us. People are looking for just weird things on the internet and who don't mind looking at old granny snap. You know, like, we're just desensitized to nasty stuff. So I want to play just a few clips from the Prune Brothers, but we're not going to spend a lot of time on it because I do have a, a greater, a larger point to make, believe it or not. This is just to refresh your memory, or if for some reason maybe you're a new listener to the show, you've never seen or heard the Prune Brothers, this will give you an idea of what I'm talking about. Got a granny in the kitchen here, grabbing her ass, looking for something in the cupboard. Ah! There's no prune juice? Gotta take a shit down. Call those Prune Brothers right, right now. So she calls these guys, the Prune Brothers are like milkmen, but instead of delivering milk, they bring you, uh, Prune juice, right? This is Esmeralda. Is this the Prune Brothers? Yeah, you better get over here right now. I need prune juice right away. I'm so constipated. Yeah. On Elmore Street. Yeah, come right now. It is a little strange to mention constipation in porn. You don't want that image floating around while you're jerking off, right? So the whole thing's weird. So these Prune Brothers come. Their sole job is to deliver the prune juice, and then they start taunting this old broad. Please let me have my prune juice. Making her beg for it. You want to earn the prune juice. They won't give her the prune juice. Please let me have the prune juice. 
please. Just how bad. So she, well, she gets on her knees and they just they pour the prune juice all over her body. I didn't do anything to get that prune juice, didn't I? Anything at all. That's where she starts taking off the clothes and they pour the prune juice on her. But then they, they, throughout the porn, they're dumping this prune juice. So there's like this t- red tinge to her body and all of her holes and stuff. Because it's like, you know. This is the guy who's fucking the old woman. That's one of the prune brothers screaming about being a prune brother. This is when she turns into a monkey. Yeah, somehow she grabs a frying pan. She's got that in one hand. This dude's dick in the other. He's like, woo, woo, wah, wah. and this is how the uh, the porn ends. Oh god! Now I gotta shit. And she runs off. The end. We're left with uh, a lot of questions. And like I started off today's show, the main question was, how is this a thing? When uh, we played it originally, many years ago, it was just this scene. It, you know, and it was cut down, so it was like, you know, five or six minutes. Well, today, I think I found the entire hour and 20 minute porn. You know, like the DVD or the VHS tape that this came on. <laughs> came on. Or was included with. I still don't know the name of this thing, but I can tell you. This is one of the more coherent scenes. This, this is one that kind of makes sense. Oh, an old woman's constipated. She needs prune juice. She's got to call someone to deliver the prune juice, and then she fucks the guys. Okay, some of the particulars are, are a little fucked up. With, you know, the pouring of the prune juice on this old naked broad and the hopping around like a monkey with a frying pan. But, uh, you know, in the, and I'm going to post this uh, a link to this video. It's all, it's I was I found this on X Hamster, right? So if you are a member of our Discord, which is free, by the way, uh, I'm going to post this in the audio video chat room so you can watch it. It's it's obviously not safe for work. If you like the Prune Brothers, though, I think you'll like the rest of the film. Now, there's not one storyline throughout the whole thing. These are like little vignettes. And the first scene is a little baby's birthday party, except it's not really a little baby. It's an adult wearing a bonnet. I'm like 75% sure that the baby is a boy. He's just really super fat. And at some point, it gets hard to tell what the gender is, right? I mean, he has titties, but so do fat women, you know, whatever. So uh, this party is very strange. There's a bunch of people sitting at the table with the little baby. It's very multicultural. Some black guys, I think, were tricked into the scene. They don't know what the hell's going on. Then a midget fairy jumps up onto the table, played by Bridget the Midget, I think, and uh, starts sucking the clown's dick. The clown that is frightening, s- scaring this little baby. Baby wants to see that. That's the clown. Just being a total fucking creeper. Baby, you want to see this? Ah, yeah. Nothing weird about a grown clown getting head. A child's birthday party. <laughs> the clown also, like, taunts the little boy. I think he puts out his cigarette on the baby's head. Oh, I guess some of the other party goers do get involved. Like Bridget the Midget stands up on the table and goes to party guest to party guest, letting them suck on her titties. And then the clown fucks her. The next scene. Yeah, we're just going to move right on. What else is there to say about that? The next uh, scene involves an obese woman outside enjoying hot dogs and potato chips. The music is excellent in this porn. She's got a plate of about, I don't know, 12 hot dogs. Well, actually, multiple plates. She's just eating hot dog after hot dog and chips. 
then all of a sudden she's out. She realizes she's eaten all of them, which is funny because there's a scene where she sticks her, you know, hand into the bowl to like feel around for more hot dogs, but it's a dog bowl. <laughs> I'm out of hot dogs. What am I going to eat now? I don't know if you could hear that, but a man approaches saying, hey, neighbor, this is obviously uh, this fat woman's next door neighbor. Now, you know that thing in cartoons where like one of the characters is starving and sees another person and then he slowly imagines that they're like a talking pork chop or something starts hallucinating. And he wants to eat them. That's pretty much what happens here. He turns into a human-sized hot dog. And then it's like a Benny Hill segment where the woman's just chasing after this guy, going down slipping slides and shit. Is that a hot dog? What? Hot dog. Come here, hot dog. I'm going to eat you. No, I just right down the street here. I'm not a hot dog. Hot dog. I'm not a hot dog. She finally captures the hot dog and then, uh, you know, she she sucks him off. Uh, the final scene that we have not yet talked about involves another midget, actually a dwarf this time. This is a man dwarf who's riding a tricycle and gets hit by a, by a woman driving a car. Here he is. He's driving on the earth or he's uh, bicycling down a hill. I mean, he's being very careless. Car comes around the corner. That's the male dwarf screaming, by the way. Oh, my God. Oh, you poor little man. Oh, my God. Oh, God, are you all right? Oh. So she picks him up, which is the last thing you should do if you hit someone with a car. But, okay, we're, we're living in porno land right now. And she takes him home. He eventually comes to... Oh, you poor little man. Little guy, I hope you're okay. Oh. Oh. Are you all right? Where's my clothes? Oh, yeah. I had to take them off. I had to bandage you up. Yeah, she took off all his clothes, obviously. You're the one that hit me. Well, you ran your bike into my truck. Are you all right, though? Is there anything I can do for you? you know what you can do for me? You can suck my dick. What? You perverted little man. I'll do no such thing. I'm going to sue you. For everything you've got. Oh, a litigious dwarf. When my attorney hears about this. A litigious, vindictive dwarf. You hear me? You run a midget over. Oh, I guess he is a midget. Sorry. Isn't there something else I can do? Yeah, there is something. Yeah, let me guess. This is something you can do. Suck my cock. You're an evil, evil little man. Little person. So she does. She sucks his dick. She even lets uh, him fuck her. And after he blows his load in her mouth. Next time, you better be careful when you see a midget riding a tricycle. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think she got it. You weren't exactly speaking in code there. That's pr pretty much it, because then the very next scene, the last scene on this film is uh, Prune Brothers. So there you go. If you ever wondered where Prune Brothers came from, I think it's this uh, compilation. If you want to check it out, uh, go to distortedview.com. Click on the Discord button. If you're not familiar with what Discord is, it's basically just a chat room or multiple chat rooms. And you can uh, meet up with other freaks, talk to them, post links to stuff. I will post a link to this video. All right, moving on now. I've got an angry white woman here. She's on the streets by her house. I don't know if the some teens were harassing her or what. Tell that bitch to eat some shit. Shut the fuck up. You know why I drive this shit, bitch? Because I got shit in my bank account, ho. My bank account. If these were white kids harassing her, do you think she would sound different? I don't think she'd be calling these guys hoes and talking about her bank account. Good for you. Uh, what? What? What you gonna do? What you gonna do? Who wants some? Who wants some? I will rock you, bro. You'll do what? You'll do what? You'll walk your little pussy bitch ass off. That's what you'll do. Go get your mama. Tell her to come in my square, bitch. To be fair, uh, it's not... I, I couldn't tell the ethnicities of these people or the races. It's, it's a mix. 
She just hates all these teenagers. Keep fucking with my kids! Keep fucking with my kids! Bitch! What a little fucking pussy! You wear fucking dangling earrings! Shut the fuck up, bitch! Shut the fuck up! She's making some valid points. Who who wears dangly earrings? My son's a bitch! You have no fucking idea, motherfucker! He would tear you up! He is not a bitch! He will fuck you up! He will fuck you up! What? What? You guys have been a Don't flick them off! Don't flick them off! Fuck you! You out here being reckless like a white piece of trash you are! Wait till you're 18, bitch! Wait till I'm I will rock you, bitch! Wait till you're 18! I will rock you, bitch! Wait till you're 18, bitch! Fuck you! That's why your face getting red from screaming, bitch! Fuck you! Fuck you up! Fuck you and your son! Hey, Ramel! Shut the fuck up, bitch! white ass! He's white trash! Shut the fuck up! Ratchet ass! Ratchet ass! Why do we always have to bring race into this? The both sides are guilty of it. White ass, yes. white Shut trash, the fuck up. fucking people, My son would fucking murder y'all. No, 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 That's good parenting right there. Yeah. She's basically getting her kid involved with Tommy, this. Tommy, because of me. It's only because. Tommy, get out here! Bust these nigger asses up. Of me that he hasn't fucked y'all up. It's only because of me. Jared, you're one gay. Yeah, it sounds like you're the level-headed one in the family. Yes, nigga. Hey, hey, bitch, you go get raped up your ass, you fucking Hey, I fuck bitches, actually. Yeah, you're gonna get raped up your ass, bitch. Hoover, bitch. Hoover. Fuck you, ho. Hoover. Hey, yo, he wants you to get out. Fuck you up. What? Telling a teenage boy he's gonna get raped up the ass. The guy back there? What? Uh... Hey, this sounds like my neighborhood. Suck my dick. Go back to doing crack, bitch. Fuck. You know, we found a used condom in front of our house the other day. I don't know if this is some sort of intimidation tactic or a welcome to the neighborhood gift. Actually, it wasn't in our yard. It was like on the... Like, where the sidewalk would be if, if we had a sidewalk, you know what I mean? Like, they, someone just threw it out of their car. And I looked real close at it, too, because I wanted to see if there was jizz in there. <laughs> so I could suck it out. A little treat for Timmy. Uh, and I think there was. Like, it was, there, it was juicy. I posted it on Twitter, of course. Fuck you, bitch. I got videos of me fucking so with my dick, nigga. Fuck you, you and your you son. Fuck you, you gotta take videos? Fuck my dick, huh? Fuck my dick, huh? Teenagers are dumb. I got pictures of me fucking. You're a redneck piece of shit. Fuck you. Fuck you. I don't care. I don't really care. Jared, Jared, don't touch her. I'm not going to touch her, but if she touch me, I'm going to rock her. I swear to God. She's walk. She's getting close now. For a while, she was like walking back to her house. You ain't got no dick. A little ass pussy ass hoe. Shut the fuck up, you pussy ass nigga. Shut the fuck up. You pussy ass go over. Like 50, oh, okay, you get the idea. This looks like a nice neighborhood. Sure, the the neighbors are loving this fight. All right, they're probably like, oh, there goes the property values. We, we got to move now. Uh, and with that, let's get into the crazy, bizarre twist of the fucked up news right now. Today's episode of Distorted View Daily is brought to you by AdamandEve.com for a limited time. That limited time, by the way, has been uh, stretched out to about, I don't know, what, nine years we've been running these ads. That says something about our relationship with Adam and Eve. It's very good. They're a great sponsor, and they love you freaks. That's why they continue to support Distorted View Daily, so I urge you all to support them. Bonus, they've got an amazing deal for you. Adam and Eve, for those of you who have never shopped with them, it's kind of like the Amazon of sex or porn, right? If it's sexual in nature, Adam and Eve probably has something that'll quench your pussy thirst. They've got thousands of adult movies. They've got toys for guys, girls, couples. They have fuck furniture. They've got lingerie, sexy costumes, even underwear for guys. They've got boner pills, pussy creams. If it's sexual in nature, like I said, Adam and Eve has you covered. They even have, like, um adult board games and stuff go to adamandeve.com here's the exclusive deal just for you freaks use coupon code freak at checkout right pick out something you like add it to your cart use coupon code freak f-r-e-a-k boom you'll get that item 50 percent off plus adam and eve is going to throw in uh a free sex swing 
If you've got a partner and you've never fucked someone while in a sling or a swing, oh, you're missing out. And if you have no one in your life, use it as a hammock or something. Use it on a, on a lazy Sunday, nice little nap or whatever. Uh, plus, Adam and Eve is going to throw in what? Uh, an adult movie or three adult movies, something like that. And free shipping on your entire order. It's an amazing deal. Go to adamandeve.com, use coupon code FREAK. Half off just about any item. Free adult movie, sex swing, free shipping, awesome deal. Adamandeve.com, coupon code FREAK. Okay. Three quick stories, then we'll get the hell out of here. First up, we're always reading these stories on the show. It's like, your toothbrush is infected with fecal matter. Airborne fecal matter from your asshole when you're taking a shit. Or like, uh, you know, your hairbrush contains, you know, like penis drippings. That was never one that we read. It's usually fecal matter. Well, there's a new one of those type of stories, and it's horrifying. Using a hand dryer, you know, the kind that uh, are in public restrooms where you just press a button and it blows air. Yeah, now that's coating your hands in slick shit. Using a hand dryer is typically considered to be one of the least nasty stages of using the bathroom. Like, I can even understand how, like, using paper towels would be gross. Because, you know, the person before you may have had shitty hands still and smeared some stuff on there. You've just washed your hands and you usually don't have to touch anything to use one of these hand dryers. Or maybe like an elbow or something. Or, you know, they're motion activated. The assumption is... All of the bathroom germs are well behind you. Well, unfortunately, that's not the case, according to a new study. In fact, hand dryers are spreading something disgusting right onto you. You guessed it, fecal particles. Oh, how is this happening? The paper published in Applied in Environmental Microbiology involved the study of three separate bathrooms at the University of Connecticut. Okay, so only three bathrooms. This isn't a widespread study. Still, all... You know, public restrooms are kind of the same. Scientists set off hand dryers in the bathroom and placed a special plate, a shit plate, a shit plate special, just beneath them for 30 seconds. After testing the plates, they showed between 18 and 30 colonies of bacteria on them. Essentially, when you flush a toilet, when its lid is off, uh, this sends fecal particles whizzing through the air at up to 900 miles per hour. No, I don't know that for a fact. Hand dryers tend to suck these particles up, you know, these little these little shit flecks, warming them up. Oh, there's nothing worse than warm shit, right? So hand dryers suck up the shit particles, warm them up, and spit them right out again onto your hands. Quote, these results indicate that many kinds of bacteria, including potential pathogens and spores, ah, can be deposited on the hands exposed to bathroom hand dryers. And the spores could be dispersed through buildings and deposited on hands by hand dryers. To avoid that bacteria, the researchers suggest fitting hand dryers with HEPA filters. I mean, you know establishments never change those hand dryers. They don't upgrade them. These are like old, rusted out, you know, pieces of shit. You can't fit HEPA filters on them. You're just going to have to outlaw old ones. You know what I mean? All right, uh, to avoid the bacteria, researchers suggest fitting hand dryers with HEPA filters, which could reduce bacterial deposits fourfold or switching to paper towels, although that solution isn't particularly uh, particularly environmentally friendly. Yeah, but then, I don't know, I feel like shit particles can cling to paper towels, too. Face it, we're just meant to be covered in shit. Don't even try to resist it. Second story we have for you today, from shit to piss. You may have been curious why Donald Trump James Comey and the words P tape were trending on Twitter today. Oh, I was crossing my fingers for a video. President Trump once told James Comey, you remember the uh, former FBI director, that he would never have hired Russian prostitutes to pee on each other because, quote, he's a germaphobe. That's according to a new tell all book by the ex FBI director. Comey's upcoming memoir, A Higher Loyalty, recounts a salacious conversation he had with Trump last January about the so-called Steele dossier, which alleges that the Russian government has all sorts of dirt on uh, Donald Trump, including a P-tape, a video of Donald Trump watching, I don't know, Russian prostitutes piss on each other, piss on him, 
or he's drinking piss. I don't know. Something to do with pee. During their conversation at Trump Tower, Comey said then-president-elect Trump offered a series of explanations for why he would never, like their bullet points. Here's why the P-tape could never have happened. Yeah, see, uh, he explains why he would never have told Russian hookers to urinate on each other. I'm a germaphobe, Trump told Comey, according to the forthcoming book. There's no way I would let people pee on each other around me. No way. The Steele dossier claims that Trump hired the hookers in 2013 to perform the lewd act in the same Moscow hotel suite that President Obama and First Lady Michelle Obama once stayed in. The allegation is that Trump wanted the Russian, or the, the, these Russian girls to do it specifically because Obama stayed in this room as a way of soiling the bed. <laughs> Trump asked, he really does not like Obama. Trump asked Comey if the FBI could do anything to disprove the scandalous news reports emanating from the unverified dossier, which was compiled by ex-British spy Christopher Steele. Sounds like a porn name if you ask me. During a one-on-one -on -one dinner at the White House a few months later, Trump raised the issue again. He said this whole ordeal was pretty painful for First Lady Melania to read. Remember, this was before the Stormy Daniels shit hit. Trump told Comey it bothered him that there might even be a 1% chance his wife might think it's true. Now, you may remember uh, Trump fired Comey on May 9th, 2017, setting into motion a series of events that led to the appointment of special counsel Robert Mueller. So, you know, Comey might just be pissed. So he's going to make shit up, right? He's upset because he lost his job, you know, and he's got a book to sell. Of course, he's got to include some uh, you know, scandalous shit in there. According to this news story, Comey's memoir drips with resentment and includes numerous personal jabs, including references to Trump as an ego driven narcissist. Is that a jab or is that just like common knowledge? He put his name on stakes and water. He does, uh, you know, have a big ego. <laughs> All right. Uh, he describes Trump as shorter than he expected with a too long tie. Again, we all like it's that's true. He does wear like these ridiculously long ties and bright white half moons under his eyes that appear to be from tanning goggles. Comey also mentioned Trump's hands. <laughs> yeah, he's bitter. They were smaller than mine, but they didn't seem unusually so. Comey. Trying to put it out there that you got a big dick. Okay. Beyond Trump's P-tape denials, Comey and Trump discussed the intelligence community's findings about Russia's interference in the 2016 election. <laughs> snooze fest. I just want to hear about Trump's water sports escapades. You want something scandalous? Okay, let's move on to the third story. A German doctor's lover died after he allegedly sprinkled cocaine on his cock just before she gave him oral sex. All right. Now, this guy deserves to be president of the United States. He knows how to have a good time. Trump won't even watch girls piss in front of him. He's such a bore, right? Dr. Andreas Niederbacher has arrested some, you know, just say that in a German way. You know, you just scream it. Niederbacher has, <laughs> has arrested. And I'm sorry. Dr. Andreas Niederbacher has been arrested after it emerged. He allegedly gave three other women the Class A drug during sex. I mean, that's cool and all, giving these ladies cocaine, but you're a doctor. You got access to the real good stuff. I want to be snorting Zoloft off your dick or something, you know, something you can't just get on the street corner. All right, uh, they reportedly suffered no serious effects. Prosecutor, I guess the women. Prosecutors say a 38-year-old woman gave Nieder Bickler consensual oral sex on February 20th and later collapsed at his home. See, now, I would consider that a serious effect. Right there. These women reportedly suffered no serious effects. And then the very next line is, oh, yeah, some woman totally collapsed and died after sucking this dude's dick. She was raced to the hospital, but she died soon after being admitted. He's being accused of giving her cocaine without her knowledge. Oh... Didn't she notice white powder on his dick? I mean, the accusation is that he sprinkled cocaine on his cock what, without her knowing. I thought it was like, hey, do you want to do some coke? The trade-off is you got to suck my dick. You know, these coke fiends are like, okay, sounds good. But that's not what happened here. These women didn't know they were doing coke. I mean, they, can't you taste it? Isn't it like a real bitter taste, that coke? I feel like I would notice that, like... 
Ooh, yo dick has the funk. But they, you know, they t- they obviously had to have tasted it. But they continue to suck because they're so cock crazy. These women, they don't love themselves. Sucking on funky tasting dick. This is how you get mouth herpes. Be aware of your surroundings, especially in your mouth. All right. She was raised to the hospital, but she died soon after being admitted. He's uh, he's being accused of giving her cocaine without her knowledge. Police believe the 42 year old plastic surgeon who met women online have many more victims across Germany. My question is, like, why was he doing this again? Like, maybe if they were amped up on cocaine, they would suck his dick harder and longer. Wouldn't tire out so quick. I'd be afraid they'd get all, like, jittery and uh, chomp down uh, on, on my uh, shaft. According to... That, that's my concern. According to German media, he was the chief physician at the uh, Amios Hospital in Halberstadt. Police in Germany charged him with bodily harm leading to death. Quote, the victims who have been hurt so far have all included that they have been ill at the meetings. All of them showed reactions due to the use of narcotics. So there you go. That pe- This apparently was his M.O. Sprinkling cocaine on his cock. Maybe it made his dick feel good. Maybe the woman would start sucking his dick and it would make his penis tingly or the cocaine would absorb into the skin or something. I don't know. He was a physician, so he obviously knew what he was doing. Uh, there you go. That, my friends, is your distorted news for Thursday. Let's do a couple voicemails and get the hell out of here. Hey, I love to hear from you freaks. There are many ways to contact the show. I'm sure you know them all by now. Show at distortedview.com. That's my email address. Send along links to funny stuff that you might want me to feature on the program. Uh, I'm all over social media at distortedview on Twitter and Instagram and facebook.com slash distortedview show. Let's check in with a few callers right now. Uh, first up, some Patreon patrons. They pledged a few bucks over there at patreon.com slash distorted view. So I will play their voicemails first. Hey, Timmy Boo. This is little baby faggot. Listen, man, I'm going in for some surgery today on my knee. What? In the event things don't go well. Has there been a lot of deaths due to knee surgery? What do you want? Sympathy from me? Thoughts and prayers? You get nothing. Fucking knee surgery. You're going to be fine. Like you're going in for a triple bypass or something. Some delicate brain surgery. Something happens. I die on the table. I just want you to know I've left my wife with a copy of my passwords oh. to both my Sideshow account and Patreon account with the request that she keep them going. Oh, that's very nice. So I might be gone, but you will still get my money. Okay. And that's what's important here. You know what? I will give you some thoughts and prayers. Good luck on that surgery. I just wanted you to know that you're going to be taken care of in the event of my death. <laughs> Thank you. So... You have yourself a good day. I'm going to go get unconscious. Talk- yeah, I guess anytime you go, you know, you get put under, there's a risk that something could happen. Hopefully by now, like he sent this at, you know, 1151. Hopefully he uh, is out of surgery and he's doing well and listening to the program. Hey, Tim, this is uh, Drew from Texas. Hi, uh, Drew. Patreon freak, side show, all that. Um, I was listening to the recent show you did. It was the best of. And yeah. at the end, Corey called in and, and it was some sort of ad lib thing he was doing. Do you think it'd be possible to go and do a later episode and find that? Maybe make it the intro for another episode coming up? Are you kidding me? Did you not listen through the whole show? I played it at the very end. I went through the trouble of finding that Mad Libs thing a- after it was completed. That's what it was. I want to hear how that turned out because I don't remember. I know I was listening at the time back then. but So you heard uh, Corey Collin ask me for the uh, you know adjectives and nouns or whatever. Lobster. You know, all that shit I said. And then at the very end, uh, because it was a best of show, obviously, years ago or whatever, Corey sent me the completed Mad Lib thing, which we played on the show. And I, and I added that at the very, very end. It's like the little tag at the end after the, the music ends. Go back and listen to that. Shame on you for not listening completely and wasting my time with that dumb question. Hi, Tim. It's Key from Boston. Hi, Key or K. I uh, just found your podcast earlier this week, and I binge listen whenever I had Ooh. the opportunity. I kind of went back and forth whether I should become a patron or not, but today like I had did. the whipped cream fart and testimonials gone wrong episodes, so I knew I had to support your content. Bravo! This young lady supports the arts. Really looking forward to listening to cum farts instead of my clients and uh, <laughs> working the word jagu uh. into every sentence possible. So thank you very much. You're a national treasure. 
finally, someone sees it my way. I think this is the first time I've ever been called a national treasure, and I like it. All right, one more voicemail here. Hey there, Timothy James Henson. What is going on? This is Rick from Baltimore. Hi, Rick. I was just thinking about you and annoying songs. I remember a song from when I was like 14 or 15, no, 16, called Angel and a Half Shirt. And I put it into Apple Music to see where it was there because I had no idea what it was. And I can't even remember what the fuck a half shirt is. Uh, I'm totally wrong. So anyway, the beginning of it is really fucking annoying. You should look it up on YouTube. There's this uh, beginning thing. I'm, I think are you using a guitar or something like well, and it goes on for like it seems like an eternity and then it kind of gets this kind of old slightly grungy feel to it the whole song's terrible but if you want to annoy people you should just say the beginning part and uh all right hold on here i think i found it angel and a half shirt this is at number 49 oh god hold on let me find a real version of this nonsense Right. This is kind of a long intro. Oh, they're finally switching it up. Oh, no. no. <laughs> Thought we are getting close to some vocals here. Oh, no. No. Ah! Oh, wait, it's getting better. <laughs> kind of. This is from 1995. Not all 90s music was great, freaks. I know you must think so because I play only the cream of the crop on this program. And my, my musical tastes are exquisite. So you think, oh my god, the 90s were an amazing decade. But there were some stinkers in there. They can't all be Dishwalla. Toad the Wet Sprocket. All right, yeah, I mean, that's not a great song. And I could see that getting stuck in, in my head. <laughs> Uh, it's like uh, Mrs. Miller doing the song. To, uh, Angel. Oh, fuck out of your audience. I would probably not, I recommend it for a hang. Uh, if you have a hangover. Oh, if you ever want to drive people away who have a hangover to homeless witnesses, there's a band called Bad Acid Trip. And the only album that I know by them is uh, For the Weird, like Die the Weird or something like that. But yeah, I think it's called For the Weird, Die the Weird. And it is really fucking annoying. You want me to play that for Jehovah's Witnesses when they come to the door? But as I Very said, specific use you can case. Definitely drive away people with hangovers or Jehovah's Witnesses or whatever. So <laughs> those are my shitty music recommendations for hangovers and Jehovah's Witnesses. Whatever the day is that you hear this. <laughs> all right, man. All right, thank you very much for all the voicemails. Keep them coming. That's all the time we have on this edition of the show. Why don't you guys do me? Show on the store to me.com. Distortedview.com is our official website. Voicemail on 4 at 206-666-4463. That's 206-660. Oh, God, is it? Oh, God. I'm out of hot dogs. What am I going to eat now? Spread the distortion, STD. Tell all your friends about the podcast. Don't forget to rate us and review us on iTunes. I will see you back tomorrow if and only if you're Sideshow members. So if, if you're not a member, check out superfreaksideshow.com. Consider signing up, becoming a true and honorable freak. You'll catch tomorrow's exclusive show. I'm also going to be back this weekend doing a show for everyone since I missed uh, one on Monday because I was sick. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. Until then, have a great day. Bye, everybody.
Hey, 